In 1979, Kinner was introducing a new figure to their Star Wars lineup, and that was Boba Fett. And to get one of these early release figures, all you had to do was cut out four proofs of purchase from your other Star Wars figure cards, mail it in, and you'd get a free rocket firing Boba Fett figure in the mail. Problem was, there were safety concerns about that firing rocket. And so the actual rocket firing figures never went into full production. There are prototypes of an L slot and a J slot, like this figure, that are now worth thousands of dollars to collectors. Unfortunately, this is not one of those. This is a replica. Boba Fett J-slot rocket firing figure to uh, resemble the prototypes that were originally made for people like me who don't have that kind of cash floating around to buy an original. So I'm taking it all a step farther and creating a box, plexiglass box to uh, display it in with one unique separate feature which is being able to open it and take it out versus it being entombed behind plexiglass for all eternity. The promotion advertised on the back of the packages talked about this upcoming figure that could launch a little plastic rocket from his backpack. Nobody knew who Boba Fett was at the time but it looked cool enough and this is the actual figure I got in the mail at the time. And yeah, I felt a bit gypped because it didn't end up being able to uh, fire off the rocket, but it was still a cool figure to have. The rockets were supposedly sonic welded into the figure's rocket pack, and that would have prevented them from coming out. However, some collectors have shown photos of what appears to be an ability for some of those to come loose. So just taking a momentary kind of second look here once. This is the figure I had gotten that was a mail away, uh, sent in the proofs of purchase and the markings on the leg here, if I can get that to show up clearly with my lighting and stuff here. But it's marked, uh, made in Hong Kong there so and I've seen in some of the uh, actual prototypes for the rocket firing Boba Fett's with the J slot that they were painted up in the color scheme uh, to what the production ones were versus just the blank gray so what are your thoughts um, you think I should paint it or just leave it the solid gray? I mean, the solid gray doesn't bother me. I think it looks fine, looks more prototypish looking there. But I know in the J slot figures that I've seen um, with the rocket firing mechanism, the real ones were painted up. So leave a note in the feedback here, paint it, leave it. Um, and then I can, if you th enough people think it should get painted, we can do a uh, follow-up on painting uh, the figure as a separate video. So let me know. This tab that you see here at the base of the J slot was also uh, an issue of concern because that was beginning to kind of warp and bend and, and break off in some of the test figures.
Here's the Mattel Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper and Cylon Raider ships with the firing missiles. It was because of the highly publicized choking hazards and death uh, associated with these toys, these ships, that had Kenner already cautious about how they were going to proceed with their uh, Boba Fett figure. If the rocket size on this reproduction Boba Fett figure is accurate to what production would have been, you can see how it's even smaller than the uh, Mattel Battlestar Galactica missiles that were causing choke hazards. Okay, so going for uh, just getting a rough sketch in here for placement and size. Uh, the height with the figure, width, arm space, and then the accessory uh, will be on display beside it. Um, so I'm giving myself like two inches here and an inch for that. So taking my initial design ideas and adding in the thickness for the plexiglass, I'm coming out at three and a half inches uh, on the overall inside dimension between wall to wall the, for the width. Uh, then adding in the thickness of the plexiglass, your outside edges total are three and three quarter inches wide. And I'm coming in at four and a quarter inches high. And again, that includes the thickness of the plexi and uh, one and three quarter inch deep for the display box here. Really can't stress enough the need for safety on this project. Uh, dealing with the blades and the plastic, the plastic can break and create very sharp edges. Uh, a blade can skip across the plastic. You could cut into your hand. So you really have to take some safety precautions and patience as you go into this project. A couple of uh, key points here is it's more dangerous to work with dull blades than sharp ones. Uh, the dull blades make you work harder with it, you're pressing harder, so you've got more risk of injury then. Uh, the blade can slip slide, cut you in the hand, uh, go crooked on you, do a crooked cut in your plastic. And when you go to dispose of the old blades, a lot of times with the new blades, it's got a built-in compartment for the used ones. If there is none, um, wrap your old blades and tape the edges before discarding them for safety. So in starting out, I'm going to use a 45-90 degree angle. Uh, I've got some of the uh, painter's tape, just because it removes easily. Um, a fine point marker, a utility knife with a good grip design to it, and a locking action there that way too. And I'm using a uh, steel straight edge as my cutting guide. And this one has a cork backing on it, and that helps it uh, prevent from sliding against a smooth surface. That way it gives a little bit of a grip in there. So I'm also going to be using a small 90-degree, uh, it's a right-angle bevel square, and a large 90-degree angle uh, bevel square there. Uh, these will be extremely useful when I begin gluing the panel sections together to keep them upright and straight. During the process, I found that putting the tape down onto the plexiglass and making my 
measurements or marks for cutting lines onto the tape worked pretty well. It helped uh, prevent the edge of the blade from skipping so much, but also my marks didn't rub off the plastic film that way. When I'm cutting, the goal is multiple cuts, not trying to make a single forceful cut into the plastic. So repetition is the king because you really are scoring the plastic, uh, not cutting all the way through. With the larger sections, I line it up with a straight edge and flex the plastic till it snaps on the scored edge. In smaller sections, um, I find it useful to have a vise hold one of the two sections as I flex along that scored edge. As a way to keep things organized, I bundle the parts uh, and label them along with the, the plan that I've sketched out in the beginning to keep track of what goes where when I'm done here. There's a number of different uh, brands of adhesives made for this, but the one I've used here is uh, Side Grip. It's made by Weldon, and this is a number four fast set. As you can see here the adhesive that's used is pretty strong powerful stuff so take precautions make sure you're using this in a ventilated area. This has a pretty high evaporative uh, property, so instead of opening the whole top of the can, uh, I'm just punching a couple holes in there to be able to pour the adhesive from the can to the needle tip applicator bottle.
it's a messy transfer so because it it evaporates pretty quickly uh, I'm putting both the original can of the adhesive keeping that into a um, Ziploc bag and also the little applicator bottle with the needle like tip I'm keeping that in a Ziploc sandwich bag also The adhesive for this plexiglass isn't like gluing two things together. You really want to line up your pieces and using that needle tip applicator it uh, kind of wicks into between the surfaces uh, versus applying glue on a surface and then pushing it together. Uh, when I've tried actually in some parts or times of this to just apply the glue to a surface and then press it together it doesn't grip and hold versus having it actually in contact the two surfaces and then using the needle applicator and letting it just kind of draw into that space then to set and it sets up fairly quickly too Some of the very small pieces broke on that scored line a bit rough. So what I've done is used some sandpaper to wear down the rough spots. And keep in mind, you want to wear a respirator or dust mask to keep the fine plastic particles out of your airway. After sanding, I've applied a little bit of the adhesive to Q-tip to run that over and smooth or finish that sanded edge a little bit further. Part of my key goal for this whole project was to be able to take the figure out of this box. So with that in mind, I made this section for the rocket holder designed so the rocket could be displayed but also removed. So the top section is slightly angled and then I drilled a hole into the plastic piece and I angled the underside with a X-Acto knife tip blade and this way I can slide that rocket up and the tip of it is holding into that drilled hole and then just doing like a, a pressure fit there to slide that into place so I can take it in and out of the display box this way. Just making a progress check on how it's all coming together so far. 
For this project, I ordered one quarter by one quarter by six inch acrylic rod pieces. And a nice thing about them is they heat well uh, with a heat gun. And by heating it and then wrapping it over a wooden dowel and holding it then uh, in position while it cools, I was able to create this piece to fit around uh, Boba Fett's waist. The straight pieces, just as they are, I was using uh, glued onto either side of the lid piece. And that way that'll create a force fit for that onto the box. After making the trim on the waist piece section, I sanded those edges down and I used the solvent on the cut ends again to finish off that sanded surface. For display and just ease of access and in the design here, I've decided to build this waist support section onto a separate piece of acrylic. And I'm using the tape here to hold these sections steady uh, as the adhesive does its magic of gluing the joints of the acrylic pieces together. So all the pieces together now on this little platform uh, and then that will be glued into place inside the display box. As my case is taking shape, one other element I want to add is a decal to give that effect of authenticity and a certain specialness to it all. I use a program called Affinity Photo uh, when I'm creating my graphics. Now I use that to create this element and to give it a glossy laminated type look. I'm simply covering it with uh, just regular packaging tape and then trimming it out, cutting it uh, to the border line here. It's already, it's looking pretty cool, but the plain paper back, I think, needs a little pizzazz. So I'm spraying adhesive onto the paper back, and I'm going to place it on aluminum foil, and uh, going to trim that out again. I think it's looking better, but now I feel it's kind of bland. I feel like it needs some texture to it here. So I'm going to create some embossing effect. I'm using this punch set and I've embossed my decal here with the date that was the original Boba Fett mail away program uh, expiration date just to throw in some numbering on there. Thank you. 
all in all said and done I think it turned out pretty good and uh, the good thing about this project is um, you know the process yeah you can maybe know a better way to go about something um, but the end product you could use that for for any figure uh, whether it's your your GI Joe or 12 inch figures or a vehicle Hot Wheels um, whatever your your end purpose is what you want to make it for but uh, this will at least maybe help give you a, a neck up on uh, starting out on something and uh, kind of find your own way through it improvise so. If you enjoyed the episode, uh, maybe consider uh, buying me a coffee. There's a uh, link for that as well. Um, just to say, hey, thanks. I would appreciate that. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the like, and uh, let me know below to your thoughts on uh, painting whether that's a route or you think it's pretty cool just to go as it is in a solid unpainted format so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next round